everyone! So today I want to talk about the new Simon and Bash short story that we are going to be getting. So just to let you know like right off the bat this video will contain spoilers for the Simon Snow trilogy, the Carry On trilogy. So if you've not read this series I highly recommend reading it and then coming back and watching this video because yeah, we're going to be talking about everything that we know, things that I really, really want to see in this story, and just a little, some miscellaneous thoughts that I have. So this is a um, short story in Rainbow Rowell's uh, book of short stories that she is publishing on November 8th. It is called Snow for Christmas, and it takes place post Anyway the One Blows, so after book three. Carry On is one of my favorite trilogies, so I am excited and also nervous at the same time for this short story. So let's just talk about everything that I want to see in this book because I was writing this aloud and there is a lot and I have to keep reminding myself that this is just a short story. It's not a full-blown novel, so we likely will not see all this stuff and that's okay. So a big thing that I want to see in this short story is Simon knowing that Baz can suck his fangs in while eating. This is something that he did not know at the end of the third book. And I remember when I read the third book, I was so surprised at the end of it that he still did not know this because I figured like we knew it. We saw him learn how to do that in like the middle of the second book. So why is it that a book and a half later, he still does not know that his boyfriend can suck his fangs in while eating, especially since they ate together so many times in the third book. Another thing that I really want to see, if we don't flat out get it, I want it to be referenced that Simon now knows that when Baz drinks animal blood, he will age, right? Something that we saw a lot in the third book was Simon consistently asking Baz to drink his blood, right? And we later find out at the end of the book that if you drink animal blood as a vampire, then you age. And if you drink human blood, then you don't age. So. I want Simon to know that and maybe that'll like change his opinion on it. Also, we kind of learn a little bit at the end of the third book that if you take little sips of human blood, you might be able to still age because it seems like that's kind of what Nicodemus and Fiona were doing. So maybe they'll talk about that a little bit and kind of bring that up. I also really want to see a little bit of angst since this story does take place around Christmas and as we know Christmas is a really hard time for them, it's a hard time for everyone in this series. I personally have a headcanon that Christmas the year after the mage died, so in 2016, was when Simon started to spiral into that initial depression. Obviously I don't want to see as much angst as we saw in book 3 and book 2, uh, but I definitely want to see it be like kind of a hard time for them. I don't want it to be like they're just so happy all the time because it is Christmas. Like Simon, no matter how many years it's been, he's still lost like so many things on Christmas and I, I want him to still be mourning that a little bit. And then just in general, I need to see a life update with these two. Like I need to see how their life is going post one week after they started trying, right? Because in the third book, I'm pretty sure that whole story only spans about a week and we never get an epilogue with them, right? It just ends on chapter 91. So I need to see how they're doing. It'll be nice to get kind of a glimpse into that life later on. Okay, and then probably like the biggest thing that I wanna see in this book is I want Simon to realize that Rosebud Boy was for him. When I went into the third book, this was like the biggest thing that I wanted to see. I wanted him to realize that it was his mother that visited him that second time in the first book, that Simon's mother actually went and saw him and called him Rosebud Boy and was not Baz's mother. But yet, still by the end of the book, he does not know that. And I don't really know how he would, find this out. You know, like maybe like Lady Ruth would one day mention it or they would just make that connection. If we could get that in this book or in this story, that would be great. But then I also remind myself that again, this is not a full blown novel, so we likely won't get that. But I just, uh, one could hope, right? I also really want to know how Lucy died. Obviously, for those of you that don't know, Lucy is Simon's mother. Uh, and we don't know how she died. We never found out how she died. I always assumed that she died in childbirth, but then when I reread the series to prep for the third book, I thought that maybe the mage ended up killing her instead, so I don't know, and I really want to know. And Rainbow Rowell did tease that there would be origin stories in this book, so maybe? And then of course, I want to see Malcolm Simon interactions. We have not seen them interact since the first book, and that was before Malcolm knew that Simon and Baz were together, so this will be the first time that we see them interact after Simon and Baz get together and after Simon destroyed Baz's house. So I'm sure all of that will be very like angsty and kind of stressful to read, but I, I definitely want to see an interaction, not only with Malcolm, but with all the Grimms because 
I know that they all have their own opinions on Simon, so that whole dinner scene will probably be very, very awkward. I need an update on Simon's wings and tail, right? He thought about getting rid of those in the third book, so I need to see whether or not he actually chose to get rid of those or if he's choosing to keep them. He very clearly still has them because the cover shows him with his wings and tail, or at least with his wings. Personally, I don't want him to get rid of the wings and tail. I think that really connects him to the magical world. But at the same time, it's such an inconvenience because he can no longer spell those away unless that spell somehow wore off between now and this story, which it very well could have, right? We don't really know much about that spell. And of course, I want to see Simon mention Penny and Lady Ruth and Jamie. Uh, when I originally saw the cover, I actually thought that they were at Lady Ruth's house. And then I looked at it more closely and I was like, wait, no, they're at Baz's house. And while I love that, I do really want to see Simon with his family more now that he knows that they're actually his family. Um, and I want Simon to kind of mention in this short story that Penny now knows that Simon has a family because as we saw at the end of the last book, he still had not told her. Yeah, so those are all the things that I want to see in this story. It was a long list, but I just, there's so many things, like I could go on and on and on. Like I had to narrow this down. Like there's so many things I want to see, but then again, it will likely only be like 50 pages. So I doubt we are going to see all of that, but I'm just excited for any Simon Bass content. Like. It does not matter what it is, like I'm just so excited that we're going to be able to, to be getting more with them. So now let's just dive into things that we know are actually going to happen in this book. Which, spoiler, it's not much, right? So the first thing that we know is that it will take place during Christmas, post Anyway the Wind Blows. I have been excessively analyzing the people on the cover, trying to figure out what year this takes place in. And based on how Old Swithin looks, I feel like it's probably in like 2020 or 2019 or just somewhere a couple of years after the third book. We also know the people sitting around the table. So as I've mentioned, I have overanalyzed this cover. Pretty sure I figured out who everyone was at the table. Going right, starting at Simon, it's Simon, Baz, Mordelia, one of the twins, Daphne, Malcolm, the other twin, and then Swithin. We know that it is definitely the Grimm family. And then lastly, we know everything that Rainbow Rowell has told us. She gave us this little list of things that to look out for in this book. I don't really know what to think about this list. Uh, the thing that intrigues me the most is origin stories because what kind of origin stories are you really going to tell us in a short story? Um, I Again, I kind of referenced that I thought it might be Simon's origin story or maybe even Malcolm's origin story because we don't really know much about Malcolm and I've always kind of been curious about him. I definitely want to learn more about Baz's dad. So I would totally be up for reading a little origin story about him because I think he's definitely lived a pretty crazy life before settling down and having a family and then again, a second family. And the last thing that I want to go through is just a bunch of miscellaneous thoughts that I have about this book that I had no idea where to place. So the first miscellaneous thought is maybe the, maybe Simon and Baz will mention their anniversary since this does take place during Christmas. I kind of want that to happen just because I'm kind of a sucker for like them bringing up like what happened on Christmas in 2015. Another thing that I really want to see and another thing that I've thought a lot about is that I'm really hoping that this feels kind of like the epilogue to the third book because as I was saying earlier, we never really got an epilogue with them, right? It just ended on that last scene with them. And the epilogue is from Agatha's point of view, which takes place a year later. So I remember when I was reading that epilogue the first time in the third book, I was just thinking like, wait, Simon and Baz must be in a completely different place now. It's a year later. Like, I want, I want to see them a year later. So I'm really happy that we finally get to see that and see a little glimpse into their lives post book three. And another, like, miscellaneous thought I have is I think that a lot of people, including myself, are starting to wonder whether or not there will be, like, an engagement in this book because I actually did zoom in on their fingers and neither one of them was, is wearing a ring. And Rainbow Rowell did post a couple presents, so that could imply that there might be an engagement. So here's the thing, I actually don't want to see one. I am very, very confident that they're going to get married at some point down the line. When I finished book three, I immediately went to my sister and I was like, Simon and Bowser are going to get married. Like I was 99% confident that they would get married at some point later on. So I don't really need to see that. You know, I don't really need to see them get engaged. It's just a very cliche thing to see couples get engaged in post stories, like post-canon stories. I would love to read a story where they're already married, but I don't really need to see them like actually get engaged, especially since this does take place during Christmas. And Christmas is already such a hard time for them that 
I feel like if they got engaged, it would just be another thing that takes place during Christmas because, you know, they got together during Christmas, but then the mage also died and so did Ebb and Simon lost his magic and all this stuff happened. I get maybe trying to balance like some good stuff out with bad, but I just don't really want to see it happen on Christmas. Personally, I want to see them get engaged on the day that they started trying. I want them that to kind of be their new anniversary. In a way, I feel like that's when their relationship did officially start because let's be honest, Simon and Baz were in such a static place for like a year and a half between when they got together all the way up until anyway the wind blows. Just in conclusion, I am one of those people that loves reading the story after the story. I love reading like what happens after the first kiss and things like that. So I'm so, so excited to be getting this story. I cannot believe that we're getting more Simon and Bass content, but I do realize that it will not be for another eight months, but at least it's happening and we're getting more and like, I, I'm so, so excited. And yeah, so that is pretty much it. Thank you so much for watching. Um, please let me know in the comments if you are excited for this and what you hope to see in this book. And yeah, I will see you later. Have a great day, everyone. Bye.